Initially, the heart consists of a simple tube. It's anchored at one end by the differentiating arterial trunks, and at the other, the extensive venous channels which drained into the atrium. The cardiac tube grows its length rapidly, and the embryonic ventricle is bent into a loop to the right of the midline. Continuing the development, the ventricular region swings back to the midline and expands and grows in length to cover the atrium and veins. Projecting laterally will become the right atrium and left atrium. The future left ventricle lies to the left of the interventricular groove and the embryonic right ventricular region communicates with the truncus arteriosus. A four-chambered heart is formed from this convoluted tube by the development of three septa partitioning the atria, the ventricles, and the truncus arteriosus. Although these septa develop simultaneously, they will be considered individually. By viewing the heart from the right side, partitioning of the atria and ventricles can be more easily visualized. Externally, a deep group separates the atrium from the ventricle. Within the heart, the atrioventricular group appears a deep invagination which constricts the arterioventricular canal. The canal becomes divided along its longitudinal axis by two partitions, growing from the walls of two common chambers toward the auricular ventricular junction. Endocardial cushions extend from opposite sides of the atrioventricular aperture and fuse into a column dividing the channel between the atrium and ventricle. From the interventricular ridge, a proliferating muscular septum advances across the common ventricle towards the base of the heart. Simultaneously, the interatrial septum rapidly grows towards the endocardial cushions, constricting the foramen primum. Before the foramen primum becomes obliterated, a new opening appears high on the interatrial septum. The time it develops to this orifice, the foramen secundum provides an interrupted shunting of blood from the right atrium directly into the left. Another interatrial septum, the septum secundum, develops from the ridge just to the right of the septum primum and extends down like a curtain over the interatrial fenestration. The advanced edge of the septum secundum forms the foramen ovale, within the septum primum, acting as a unidirectional flatter bulb. Thus, blood only can flow to the right atrium to the left. An opening persists between the ventricular cavities. Closure of this ventricular foramen awaits the elaboration of a complex spiral septum which splits the truncus arteriosus and conus region into the aorta and pulmonary artery. The formation of this partition is more clearly seen if the heart is turned by 45 degrees. Originally, the left and right ventricles share a common outflow channel, which is the truncus arteriosus, which gives rise to the aortic arches. The truncus arteriosus is presented schematically as a transparent cylinder. The bifurcation of the truncus arteriosus illustrated here represents two of the aortic arches. The fourth aortic arch forms the aorta and the sixth is the origin of the pulmonary artery. A pair of ridges which develop at the bifurcation spiral down the truncus arteriosus. They fuse along the axis of the cylinder to produce a single spiral septum extending down towards the ventricle. The interventricular foramen is obliterated by masses of endocardial tissue from the ventricular septum, from the endocardial cushions, and by the spiral aortic septum. The partitioning of the heart into its component chambers and corresponding arteries is now complete.